Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be unboxing and working on a brass Southern Pacific Daylight locomotive that I picked up on eBay a couple months ago. I've been on the hunt for a new GS4 locomotive just because I find that my Bachman GS4s have had a lot of problems, especially in terms of derailing, and I think it's largely due to the sizes of the flanges being just a little bit too small. So I figured for the next Daylight locomotive, I'd change things up a little bit, try to find something from another manufacturer, and I found this one, which is in uh, kind of questionable condition from Sunset. So even though brass engines tend to be a little bit tricky to uh, fix up if they have issues, I think I'll take my chances on this one and we'll just see. Hopefully I haven't made off with anything too bad. It did appear to be in pretty good cosmetic shape, but of course there's no way of knowing until we get it out of the box. So let's open this thing up and see how I made off. And here it is, it did come with the original box, and uh, apparently Sunset Models tend to be a pretty good manufacturer from what I've heard in the community. So let's get this one out of the box and see what kind of condition it's in. Just look at that, let's get this thing out of the packaging. Wow, check it out. You know, it, it's certainly not perfect in a couple places, but uh, overall, this is a very nice looking locomotive. It's actually in slightly better condition than it uh, appeared in the pictures, which is not something that's very common. Yeah, overall, I can't spot any uh, significant damage. Let's have a look at the tender. Yeah, doesn't seem half bad. So why don't we take this thing over to the track? We'll test it out. Again, the seller did claim that it had issues, but uh, hopefully it's nothing too significant and uh, we can turn this into a, a fantastic running locomotive. So hopefully we can get a little bit of a better idea of what the condition of this locomotive is like. Unfortunately, a key problem with a lot of these brass and die cast models is that since the whole body is made out of metal, there's a lot of opportunities for short circuits to happen. So if the seller's claiming this thing has problems, that's probably what I would put my money on. Anyways, let's give this thing some power and uh, see what happens here. Oh, it did move a little bit. I'm increasing the voltage and nothing's happening. It felt like the motor just moved a little bit. Oh. Let's give it full voltage here. Okay then, that sounds like we've spun something in the drive. Okay, so the seller was not kidding. This thing definitely does have some issues. It's got some sort of an electrical connectivity issue and it's also clearly got a problem with the drive now. So let's bring it over to the workbench and see if we can't do something to try to make this better. So we'll see what we can do on this locomotive. It's too bad. I got kind of excited there when I saw it moved a bit. I thought, you know, maybe just the dirt on the wheels was preventing it from going, which, uh, you know, this is clearly part of the problem, but uh, the fact something has spun in the drive, it's not so good. As a matter of fact, I can actually see where the problem is. It's kind of hard to look in there, but uh, it looks like something on the drive shaft has actually split. And with this light, you can kind of see what's going on in there. So I have no idea how we're uh, supposed to get down to that, but uh, we'll figure it out. One thing that I want to be very careful about, though, is that these trucks are all spring-loaded. And I can tell you from experience, if you remove the screws and those come out, they're a nightmare to get back in. So hopefully there's a way to kind of pop the drive out without interfering with that. I'm not entirely sure these are the types of things that you sometimes will encounter when working on fancier brass locomotives. Anyways, let's see what we can do here. Notice that there's a screw here and two on the back, so I'm kind of wondering if we remove those, if the drive will pop out. There's only one way to find out, I guess. Well, looks like we're making a little bit of progress. Now let's see if this front one holds the rest of it in. Oh, 
Okay, that didn't do anything. Let's try this screw. All right, that was not so bad. Um, anyways, now I have a bit of a better look at what the problem is. You can see that this is just uh, clean cut right off the motor. Uh, the rest of it's actually still on there. So I think this probably just dry rotted. Um, we'll see quickly. There's no resistance, so the drive's not seized up. That could have, you know, caused that. The motor seems to be turning pretty smooth. So I think this is really just the main issue. Obviously, it'd be good to open all this up and lubricate it, but uh, this is not that bad. Well, we have this thing apart. We'll just check in on the gearbox. If we remove these two screws, it should allow us to pop this off, which I think will allow us to open all that up and just have a look. Let's throw some fresh oil in there because I'm guessing by the looks of things that this engine has been sitting for an awful long time. Well, overall, it's not that bad. You know, there is a little bit of uh, old grease in there, but uh, it's even still kind of viscous. I'm going to clean this out just for the sake of it, you know, because we already have this whole thing apart. But honestly, this wouldn't harm this locomotive all that much. So I went and got all these components all cleaned up. I think they came out looking pretty good. There was a little more uh, grime in that gearbox than I originally thought, so I'm kind of glad that I cleaned it all out. Anyways, we'll throw some fresh oil and grease, and I'm sure that this thing will be mint. All right, so with that all reassembled, I think it's good to go, but uh, I wanna kinda clean all these parts up first just because, uh, as you can see, everything is really dirty. I'm guessing that this locomotive had to have been sitting at least 20 years, if not more, just due to the oxidization on the wheels and all the dust in this thing. I don't know, I don't think anybody's been running this anytime recently. So we'll see what we can do to kinda tidy it all up a little bit. Okay, so that right there is a bad sign. Something is clearly jamming up a little bit here. Let's see if we can find the source of that problem. This rod is just a little bit bent. That's more like it. So I think at this point we can go ahead and uh, try to reinstall the gearbox. So I think with the uh, drive hopefully all sorted out, we'll try to focus in on the wheels, which obviously are not looking so great. To do this, I'll hook up a controller to the motor. We'll try to get the wheels turning on their own, and then we'll uh, just try to kind of clean them manually here. Oh, 
That's probably the most glossy those wheels have looked in like 40 years. All right, well, I think at this point, uh, the only thing left to do is to take this thing over to the track and see if it runs. Well, hopefully our efforts will have paid off with this locomotive. I think that it should run, but uh, you always never know. I mean, if I put something backwards on or something like that, we might have a short circuit. I also find it a little bit strange that there's no drawbar for the tender. I don't see any place to attach one to the locomotive, so I think I'm gonna have to fashion something up there at some point, but uh, for now, Let's just see if this thing will start. Oh yeah. Yeah. We have yep. Well we had a runner. Well, it's now about five hours later, and I think that I finally got this thing working right. Despite being a runner, it could not handle the 22 radius curves on my layout, as you saw, so I had to do quite a few modifications to get this thing to work right. The first mod was replacing the two front wheels with some slightly smaller ones, just so there was a little bit more room for the front truck to pivot. The second modification was removing the center flanges, which just allows the wheels to have a little more play on the curves. And then the final two modifications being tapping a bolt into the locomotive so I could add this drawbar, as well as tapping a screw into the tender, that way I could properly connect the wire and make a more reliable electrical connection. So this thing's all ready to go now. I'll give it some power and show you all how it runs. So you can see it navigates through the corners with no problems. It just runs like a dream. It's super smooth. Top end speed is fantastic. It's pretty good. And uh, when it comes around in a second here, I'll show you the low speed. It's also quite impressive. I don't know what kind of gearing they put on this locomotive, but uh, just check this out. So yeah, as you can see, this locomotive just runs like a dream. So I think that there's only one thing left to do now, and that's connect my daylight coaches up to it and run it as an entire train. All right, well, I got this thing all coupled up. Let's give it some power. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, folks, I think that that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm absolutely thrilled with these results. I'm so happy to see it finally running around the layout as well as it does. I mean, I've been running this thing for 10 minutes straight, and it hasn't missed a beat. It's just been going around like a top, and it's just so great to see. You know, I did have to put a fair amount of effort into getting it to where it is, but there's nothing more satisfying than putting a lot of effort into something and then having really good results like these. It's just awesome. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed as well. And with that, I just want to thank you all so much for watching.